Sound Mind and Body is supported by My Body Tutor. Lose weight, look great, and get the confidence you deserve with your own weight loss coach that will help you stick to your weight loss plan by providing daily and personal accountability like no other service in the world. For $50 off your first month, mention Sound Mind and Body when calling 516-456-6248 or by visiting mybodytutor.com. Sound Mind and Body is also brought to you in part by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. Hello and welcome to Sound Mind and Body, a podcast where we interview inspiring people on the many different ways to stay healthy, balanced, and well of mind, body, and spirit in today's crazy world with a dash of woo-woo. I'm your host, Sheila Melody, and today's show is all about the myths and truths of hormones. I had the opportunity to talk to Dr. Cheryl Selman again. You might remember her from episode 24, Generation Zapped, where she was talking about EMFs and the impact of the Wi-Fi world we live in. Another very informative interview that you should go back and listen to when you get a chance. Dr. Cheryl Selman is a naturopathic doctor, psychotherapist, journalist, international lecturer, contributing writer to numerous health magazines and radio host, whose focus has always been to offer practical, safe, and effective holistic solutions to the myriad of health and hormonal issues challenging women of all ages. Dr. Selman admits to being what she calls a hormone heretic. She challenges many of the accepted beliefs that we have been taught about our female bodies and our hormones and seeks what will truly support all women to attain optimal health and wellness. You can read all this information in her book, Hormone Heresy. And in fact, I have a very special offer to our listeners today. I have 16 copies of Dr. Selman's book, Hormone Heresy. And I will send a book to the first 16 people to contact us and let us know what's the most woo-woo thing you've ever done. Just send a voice memo or email to soundmindbodypodcast at gmail.com or go to my website, soundmindbodypodcast.com and submit your answer through the contact form. I'll get back in touch and send you a copy of this very important book, And chances are, I will also feature your answer on one of my upcoming podcasts. This is a very informative interview, a must listen for all women and for men who want to understand the women they love. So without further ado, Dr. Cheryl Selman. Well, I'm excited to be back. I have so much to share. So I love the fact you're giving me this opportunity, Sheila. Well, you do have so much to share. I could probably do at least four different <laughs> podcast episodes with you, but we'll, we'll have you back again to talk about more stuff. But today, we're focusing on hormones. Specifically, we're going to start and talk about the myths and truths of hormones. Let's start at the place where the myth that women's bodies are innately flawed and there needs to be medical interventions and supplementation and everything to manage our flaws, which are hormones. So why don't we talk, start there? <laughs> so that's a, a great place to start. In my book, Hormone Heresy, when I was researching women's history and how women have been viewed throughout history, particularly from a, you know, a standpoint of their bodies and hormones, I was horrified to discover that throughout history in our patriarchal culture, women's bodies were considered innately flawed. Even Hippocrates, our beloved Hippocrates, says, what is woman? And he answered, disease. And that paradigm of women, that we are innately flawed, that we are innately inferior compared to men, and if we really look at the history of how women have been perceived uh, for thousands of years, I have to say it's from this perspective that we are um, inferior to men. Our organs are just inside-out organs of male organs. Um, our brains are smaller. Uh, you know, we're more volatile. I mean, every negative connotation possible was projected onto women up until the present time, I have to say. So it's a historical, <laughs> well, it's probably, yeah, it's a, exactly. you know, it's a, 
it's a it's a patriarchal model that demeans and diminishes the real power of women and it has been with us mm-hmm. a really long time and has seeped into the medical paradigm to this present day. Well, even the fact that most medical research has been done on men, is that correct? A, a perfect example is that when they were um, investigating the um, effect uh, on of HRT for heart disease in women, those studies were done uh-huh. on men. Now, you can't do <laughs> studies on men and, and then translate it into women because our physiology is totally different. And yet yeah. that was the foundation which it was decided that uh, hormone replacement therapy was a benefit for women's heart, which actually is not true. Okay. So is it a myth that, you know, in perimenopause, it's a time of estrogen decline or we're we're losing, you know, we're declining in, in our vibrancy? And is that a myth or is that true? <laughs> okay. It's all a myth. So there was a book written okay. in 1966 called Feminine Forever. We'll, we'll go back in history a little bit because it, it's prevalent okay. um, in the, our thinking to this very day. So this book was written in 1966 by a preeminent uh, gynecologist, actually. He was head of the Association of Obstetricians and Gynecology. He was esteemed, and he wrote a book called Feminine Forever. And he said that at menopause, a woman becomes the equivalent of a eunuch. Her ovaries fail and cease to produce estrogen. And um, uh, essentially, he saw this time as a time of, uh, a, a quote-unquote, decrepitude and decline. And this was in 1966, right after the pill came out in 1960. Now, people don't remember this, and history is written by the winners, and I I love that saying, and it's so true when it comes to women, because when the pill was first released in 1960, it had never been thoroughly tested, so they released it with very high doses of estrogen, and women were dying of blood clots and strokes. Um, in the oh. 1960s. So that was the mm-hmm. release, you might say, of a whole new era using hormones for women, in, in this case, birth control. So the low-dose pill, as it is called now, is low-dose in relationship to the extremely high doses of uh, the hormones that were put in the initial pill. Low-dose doesn't mean low because you have to have high doses of hormones to suppress ovulation. So when that came out in 1960, mm. then all of a sudden a new market was available. Now the menopausal woman was the target of this new industry, and they promoted uh, a solution to this time of decrepitude and decline, and women became, you know, um, eunuchs, and that was estrogen replacement (laughs) therapy. So that hit the market. And that hit the market with great gusto. Uh, women were just knocking down their doctor's doors because they were told it would keep them young forever and, 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 and young and juicy. Actually, that was really uh-huh. how it was promoted, young and juicy. And oh um, so women, of course, were just easy, easy game, right? And for 10 years, women were given estrogen replacement therapy without any progesterone, whether they had uteruses or no uteruses. No woman should be on estrogen alone period. But that's what they did. And that came to an abrupt halt 10 years later when there was an 800% increase in uterine cancer in women taking estrogen replacement oh therapy. God. So again, yeah. oops, another mistake, right? Oh, we got it wrong. Oh so sorry, women. So women with uterine yeah. cancer were dying or getting hysterectomies from the oh. hormone estrogen. And then we uh, proceed along and they had to kind of regroup They were losing their market share, so uh, it took another 10 years or so, and they reformulated it, became hormone replacement therapy, and it was marketed initially as a solution to osteoporosis because women did not want to go near the stuff after that scandal. But they Mm -hmm. did a really good marketing job convincing us that Osteoporosis was an estrogen deficiency disease, a menopausal problem, a women's problem, and there we are, back on it, which is false. All of that is false. And um, HRT okay. lost favor when in 2002 the Women's Health Initiative came out and said, uh, we're stopping this massive study early because we have seen the relationship of uh, hormone replacement and increased incidence of breast cancer. 
So oh everyone God. freaked out. Women freaked out. But you can't stop HRT cold turkey. You'll go through withdrawal, which wasn't understood. So women were in this dilemma. So now we're at the age uh, for bioidentical hormones. And, um, you know, that comes with risks as well. To get back to, so this whole thing that I've been saying is to um, um, help women understand a, a context that we've been told we need estrogen. But the fact of the matter is that women rarely run out of estrogen, especially if you're overweight. Your fat cells make estrogen. Your adrenals mm-hmm. make estrogen. Estrogen is even made by, you know, skin cells. I mean, if we are looking after ourselves, we have the ability to make estrogen. Even though we are no longer um, ovulating, the, the ovaries can make a little bit of estrogen. A lot of the slack is taken up by the adrenal glands because the adrenals help to produce hormones and we need to look after the adrenals. And if we are carrying any extra weight, weight is actually an organ, fat cells are an organ that generates right. estrogen, right? So yes. what's happening is that, that we now... <laughs> So we now know what we what we know is that um, the problems that are associated with perimenopause are not from a um, decline of estrogen. It's really from an imbalance in the relationship between progesterone and estrogen. Progesterone right. is what falls very low around perimenopausal okay. time because we're not ovulating on a regular basis anymore. It's irregular. Our cycles are irregular. And this leads to an imbalance of plenty of estrogen being produced but not balanced by progesterone, which is absolutely essential to keep us hormonally balanced and healthy. Because I remember reading about this, that, that progesterone was declining, and, and so I ordered this you know, online some progesterone cream and I was just like self, you know, applying it. And then I went to, I remember I went to, a, I think it was a acupuncturist because I was starting to have hot flashes and we did some blood tests and realized that I was overdosing on the progesterone. So it was making my body think that I was really low in estrogen. It was making everything out of balance, in other words. So, I, you know, what is your recommendation for people? Like, I, what I realized from that is that I can't, you know, you have to kind of be monitoring with your blood tests, and you can't just, you know, put on some creams, you know, what you think. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what is the how do you achieve that balance? How do you achieve the most healthy balance to feel the best? Okay, so before we go there, we have to understand a few things. So okay. first of all, our body is designed by nature to help us sail through all stages of life. And mm-hmm. uh, whether you are in your menstruating years, whether you are in your perimenopausal years, whether you're in your menopausal years, if you are if your body is healthy and balanced, you will not be suffering from symptoms. So we need to understand mm-hmm. that our bodies aren't here to punish us and we're not supposed to be suffering from either PMS or or hot flashes or night sweats. This is an aberration. This is not normal. It is not a normal right. part of our passages through life. So we need to first okay. understand that. And then we need to understand that our hormones are not separate from how the rest of our body is functioning. In fact, right. they're more symptomatic of underlying imbalances. So you can try to go after the symptoms and alleviate the symptoms. And, you know, progesterone mm-hmm. is a value. Uh, I wrote about it in my book, Hormone Heresy, but it's a value only in the context that you are addressing all the other issues that are requiring okay. the need for hormonal balance. So, for for instance, progesterone can be really beneficial for hot flashes for about three months. But the hot flashes are the underlying cause comes from an exhausted adrenal gland, which is actually okay. dysregulating the system. And progesterone is a raw material to build your cortisol hormones that your adrenals need. So after a while, right. when you take progesterone, the body's going to prefer to use it to help restore adrenal function and it's not going to be effective in you know this immediate relief from hormones i think progesterone has its place but like you said overdosing on progesterone without addressing the underlying issues will mm-hmm. cause 
the estrogen levels to get too low. Everything is a delicate balance with hormones. You can't just right. be messing with hormones. They're very delicate. They're made in parts per billion, parts per trillion. I mean, they're potent. So yeah. my my kind of my mission in life is to help women understand their bodies, how to read their symptoms, and how to get their bodies back in balance at any age without relying on hormones for the long term because there are consequences. Okay. Estrogen and progestin, the synthetic form of progesterone, are listed as known mm-hmm. human carcinogens. We need to oh understand gosh. there are risks associated with taking these hormones. And right now, they are seen as like the salvation for women. And, you know, scripts are written just like, you know, it's going out of style. And I yeah. have never used hormones. And I'm way past menopause, and I have no hormonal imbalances, and my body is functioning optimally. My skin isn't drying out. Uh, you know, I ha- there are ways yeah. that we can continue to get healthy. So I guess my big message is that all hormonal imbalance is a symptom of poor health. Address the underlying mm-hmm. issues, and your hormones will you know, just be flowing naturally and imbalanced at any age. Hey, it's Tim Edwards with the Inbound Podcasting Network and producer of Sound, Mind, and Body. Just the fact that you're listening to the Sound, Mind, and Body podcast tells us that you enjoy consuming your content through your ears. Now, if you're a podcast listener, you're a perfect fit to enjoy audiobooks. So for you, our listeners and official members of Sheila's Woo Woo community, Audible is offering you a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial to check out their awesome service. Give it a shot. You've got nothing to lose. It's absolutely free for 30 days, and you get a free audiobook to keep even if you don't continue with the subscription. Support Sound, Mind, and Body by visiting audibletrial.com slash inbound. That's audibletrial.com slash inbound. We'll include a link in the show notes, or just click the Audible banner at soundmindbodypodcast.com. Hey everyone, Sheila here to tell you about a very special offer from My Body Tutor, a weight loss program that is 100% guaranteed. Yes, you heard that right, 100% guaranteed. I interviewed Adam Gilbert, founder of My Body Tutor, on episode 19, and I was so impressed with this program that I asked Adam how we could work together, and he is now offering our listeners $50 off the first month. Plus, he offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you really have nothing to lose except some of that stubborn weight. And you know you want to lose those few pounds, right? I certainly did. I signed up, and after one week, I lost two pounds. I'm so excited. So try it. Go to mybodytutor.com and sign up. Tell them Sound Mind and Body referred you, and you will immediately be credited $50. Or go to the show notes on this podcast, and the link will be there. And it's also on my website, soundmindbodypodcast.com. Let me know if you're signing up. We'll do this together. Mybodytutor.com. On the next episode of Sound Mind and Body, we speak to Core Strength Vinyasa Master Trainer, and founder of Yoga Shred for Men, Tristan Gatto. There's so many health risks associated with physical activity. You have to know how to, especially if you're working with people as a fitness professional or a yoga professional, that's why there's certifications and trainings because you need to keep the public safe. Right. You need to know that if people are on beta blockers or blood pressure medication or if they're diabetic, Those things are all assessed anytime you work with a personal trainer, when you come in for physical therapy, we assess all of it because it's really important. It could be detrimental, too much exercise or putting people in a state where they're in distress instead of like a target area where they're safe and they're getting that cardiovascular benefit as opposed to like you're gassing them out and they're going home and having a heart attack, Yeah, which is no, not good. That's next week on Sound Mind and Body. Okay, we're back and we are talking to Dr. Cheryl Selman and she's explaining the many things women go through when they start to head toward 50.
what happens when women arrive in their 50s. They arrive in their 50s exhausted. In yeah, that's so true. We're, we're exhausted. We're toxic. You know, many of us emotionally drained. You know, we don't have time to address all the things that bring us into balance. We don't have time to meditate. We don't have time to exercise. You know, mm-hmm. or we're running between parents and kids, you know. I mean, look at that time of our life. We're under immense strain. It certainly happened to me in my early 40s when all my night flushes, flashes and all that stuff started happening. So we are approaching a time in our life where our body is beginning to change because we're in a life mm-hmm. cycle. And when you get into your 50s, there are definite energetic changes, biochemical changes that are occurring. If you do not have the knowledge and the wisdom and the discipline to honor the needs of your body at that stage of life, your body will let you know that you're not taking care right. of it properly. So and this that's was my lesson. Happening. And then they go get the, the hormone replacement therapy, and then it just Be- kind of because puts it we more out of been, balance, right? But, but we, yes, we have been brainwashed. We are not educated. Mm-hmm. We are yeah. listening to doctors who are well-intentioned, but there's a huge business in bioidentical hormones. They're not cheap. Ah, and okay. they yeah. are a huge business. And these doctors have been, I've gone to trainings. I've seen how doctors are trained. They are taught that women run out of estrogen. Part of the problem is blood tests are not accurate. And they lead to mm. misdiagnosis of estrogen deficiency. Right. You want an adrenal Ugh. test or even urine test. You don't want to rely on a blood test to get a true assessment of your hormones. You also need to look at symptoms. You need to do a whole thorough assessment, including what's going on with your adrenal glands. Or go to a good Chinese acupuncturist. They can check out between your tongue diagnosis and your pulses and your symptoms very clearly what's happening with hormones. Don't even bother getting a test. To, you know, I mean, there are ways to assess. Okay. But you first need to understand that these symptoms are indications that your body is out of balance and putting a woman on hormones, be it HRT or bioidentical hormones, which is just estrogen is estrogen is estrogen. There is no right. safer form of estrogen, plant-based estrogen, you know, Premarin, horse-based estrogen. The body is you know, is, is, is estrogen. The difference between HRT and bioidentical hormones is the progesterone. We're using bioidentical molecular equivalent of progesterone and bioidentical as opposed to synthetic, which is not a good mm. progesterone at all. But if a woman is overweight, let's take this as an mm-hmm. example. If a woman is overweight and then she starts, fat cells make estrogen. So if you're getting hot flushes and night sweats, it doesn't mean you're running out of estrogen. It means that your adrenals are exhausted. It may mean that you have insulin resistance because look at this. When you have high estrogen levels, um, let's say because you're overweight if you or on hormones, but let's just, before you even go to hormones, let's say you have high, maybe you're perimenopause. You're not running out of estrogen. Most women are prescribed when they're in perimenopause and not even at menopause yet. When estrogens are high, progesterone is low. If you have high estrogen levels, you will also raise your insulin levels. You will also Ah. raise your cortisol levels. So you have high cortisol will lead to high estrogen and to um, high high insulin, and they all affect each other, right? And then the corresponding hormones that get suppressed when estrogen, cortisol, and insulin are high are progesterone and thyroid and testosterone. So the more these are out of balance, the more the higher Mm. the estrogen levels. So if you are overweight, you are making plenty of estrogen. You're put on hormones. Now you're making excessive amounts of estrogen that can impair your thyroid function. It can lower your uh, progesterone levels. It will add to more weight. It will add to more Mm -hmm. inflammation. It will add to more depression. And now you're really a mess. And you think it's you, your hormones, your aging. No, because you're not addressing the underlying issues. And the treatment that you think is your salvation to staying young and healthy and balanced is actually putting you further out of balance and at risk of more potentially chronic issues. Estrogen can impair your gut microbiome, making it more prone to, making you more prone to candida overgrowth. 
It alters the microbiome. It can be a risk factor for breast cancer. It can lead to definitely thyroid issues, which leads to more depression and memory loss, and we miss the boat. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Everything you're saying, Dr. Cheryl, is what I have been through. The thyroid, the insulin resistance, the adrenal fatigue, all of these things happen to me, and I'm just feeling like I'm getting myself back on track, you know, and more balance in my life, meditation, those exercise, those kinds of things, adding a little bit more of that into my life, along with good nutrition, and I don't have any more hot flashes. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I see what you are taught. It's happening to me, and I've never had uh, the hormone replacement therapy. I've never done that besides doing those creams that I did. So what do you recommend? Like, I also find that, you know, what I went through too during my, in my 40s, and I, and I have some friends going through it in my late 40s, uh, I felt like I was getting cramps again. Like, I felt like I was a teenager again, you know, because when I was a teenager, first getting my period, I had lots of cramps and I was just down for the day, you know, on that first day. And then as I went, through my life, everything was fine and balanced, and then getting into my 40s, it started again, where I'd get these awful cramps. What is that about? Is that just about the balance of uh, progesterone? Because that's when I feel like it all started. So what are cramps? Well, cramps are indication of yeah. inflammation in the body. Okay. It could also indicate low on minerals like magnesium. Something is okay. off. It's a message from your mm-hmm. body. It's not your hormones doing it to you. Something okay. is off. You're inflamed or you're uh, generally low on key nutrients like magnesium, maybe like vitamin E. You know, um, you know, th- this, is, this is what the message is. Cramps are inflammation. So you okay. need to uh, take... Um, Eliminate the sugar, <laughs> eliminate the crap, oh, yeah, reduce the stress, yeah. um, take more magnesium, maybe take more mm-hmm. fish oil, more curcumin, and that, uh, VCBDs right now are really fantastic for women's issues. This is what needs to be done. This is a message from your body. And it's no different if you're having those symptoms in your 40s and you had them in your 20s. It's the same cause. And in fact, you're probably yeah. more inflamed in your 40s and 50s than you were. So when you're starting yeah. your body, so when you're pushing your body, of course your hormones are going to get out of balance. Of course they're going to have issues because mm-hmm. when you are pushing yourself and not sleeping and working hard and mm-hmm. not eating well and you know, of course your body's going to start showing up in some way. It's going to start, right. you know, screaming at you. But what we have to understand, when we go through these changes in life, perimenopause or menopause, it is not because we need hormone replacement therapy to keep us young, healthy, and vital. <laughs> that's not the that's not the answer. The answer is getting your body back in balance. Because let me tell you, with natural approaches, which I have been using for myself and in my practice, with natural approaches, you can regenerate your hormones at any age. So, you know, wow. kind of contemplate on that statement. You can regenerate yeah. your hormones at any age. And you can do that wow. in a variety of ways that I use in my practice, but I've been experimenting on myself, Sheila. I had all those symptoms in my yeah. 40s. I had hot flashes. I had night sweats. This is early 40s. I, I didn't even understand yeah. hormones at that point. You know, all I know is all of a sudden my body was starting to, you know, rebel. And I had a year yeah, of insomnia right. and anxiety attacks at 4 a.m. Classic adrenal exhaustion symptom. Uh, Classic. Okay, but I didn't okay. know it at the time. I had to figure all this out. So now right. it's easy. I can share it with everyone. I've been through it. Oh, my gosh. But yeah, women and have to wake it, it, up. We have been, I have to say, well-intentioned as so many practitioners, functional medicine doctors, everybody are. But so many of us have been hoodwinked into the I, medical I model. What you're, yeah, it's, we all have been brainwashed to think, oh, this is my hormones. I need to go get, you know, hormone re- replacement therapy. It's, you're right. It's just been... You know, that's what we ought to do. And you go to the doctor, it gives you the pill. It's a temporary fix. 
it makes them feel better. You know, they feel better. For, for the time so, being, yes. Right. And then what happens? If you take those, you feel better for the time being, and then is well, what's it the if game you continually... Plan? Yeah. What's the game what plan? The how game long are you going to be on these hormones for? What, no one ever has a game plan as to say how long am I supposed to take them. There's never been any studies to say like they're totally safe into your 80s and 90s. I don't know. Well, yeah, some women I've heard have taken them for a short period, you know, I don't know, for years, and then all of a sudden going, okay, I don't need these anymore, and then they, is that maybe because they feel like if they've gone through that period of adjustment, and and now they don't need them anymore. Like I had a friend that did that. Um, but I don't. What is that about? Is it just because maybe she became more balanced in other areas of her life? You know, well, where it's her body obviously hard, holistically it's, balanced. It's it's hard to say. I don't know this person, but I can tell yeah, you right. <laughs> that that women are kind of um, terrified into taking them for the long term because they believe if you don't yeah. take them, you're you're going to start to shrivel up. You're going to lose your libido, your skin's going to age, your vaginal tissue is going to shrink up. I mean, you know, I mean, there are, there's right. a lot of fear about letting go of hormones. Right, it's so true. So right? what do you recommend? Let's say you're in your mid to late 40s or you're starting to feel some of these things. What would you recommend uh, first step to do: go to a naturopath. Go to a, what would you recommend? Now that well, you know, um, I well, well, we have to get educated. It's not just going to somebody. Mm-hmm. We have yeah. to understand our bodies. Do you know? So, so um, someone once said, you know, you, you need to know how to, you know, when you go to a doctor, how to ask questions. No, you need to know how to interpret the answers. You can't go to a doctor, ideally, I mean, this isn't, you know, in my perfect world, women would have more knowledge, they would be more educated, they could go to a doctor and evaluate that what that doctor is saying, hopefully go to someone they trust and that's, you know, working in a truly holistic approach, and they would be able to decide if this is the best path for them because they have more knowledge about their bodies. But women have very little knowledge mm-hmm. about their bodies. That's why in, in hormone heresy, I spent a lot of time in a very simple way explaining what's going on in our bodies because I didn't know, Sheila. I didn't know yeah. anything about right. what was going on in my body. I, I learned through right. experience, right? So uh-huh. we have to um, we have to understand some fundamentals. Number one, our body is not innately flawed. Number two, our healthy body can transition through all stages without symptoms. Women in Japan, for instance, do not get hot flashes. That's something mm-hmm. very much wow. a Western symptom. Um, they 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 may get some stiff necks, but they don't get hot flashes. And uh, it wasn't until Western diet was introduced into Japan that the Japanese women now have a new word to describe the symptoms that they were getting, like hot flashes. And in Japanese, their new word is hot flash. That's, you know, hot flash is Japanese now. <laughs> they call them hot flash, you know, because oh my God. now they're getting hot flashes. So think about that. Oh. What causes a hot flash? It's in. Oh. It's insulin resistance. It's when we're not managing our blood sugars. When I had a chocolate cake or wine late at night, those hot flashes mm-hmm. were just going like crazy. The yes. liver's involved. The liver's involved. Yep. The way you manage your blood sugar's involved with things that generate uh, this dysregulation of the body. And, uh, mm-hmm. the, you know, the adrenals are involved. I just wanted to mention I have one client who... She is in her early 60s now, and she said when she started to, you know, feel like she was, well, she never went through any of these symptoms because she did educate herself about her body, and she became a raw vegan (laughs) during the time, uh, you know, in her 50s, and she never had one symptom. You know, that might not be for everybody, but it's just balancing your body to its fullest healthy potential. So let me give you some options and some understanding. First of all, I have been a big fan of traditional Chinese medicine. In traditional Chinese medicine, they say when you start getting into your 50s, 
there are energetic changes. Your kidney energy, which is not just your kidney organs, but it's an energetic, you know, it's, a, it's an energetic um, meridian system that controls hormones, it controls sleep, it controls energy, it controls your bones. This is a fundamental life energy of the body, the kidney energy. As you get older mm-hmm. and put your body through stress, <laughs> you know, the yeah. natural tendency is for this energy to diminish, become more deficient. Mm-hmm. Now, when um, women are starting to experience hot flashes, this diminishment, this deficiency of this fundamental energy that rules your hormones and bones and sleep is starting to show up as an imbalance. And what tends to happen, there are two aspects of this fundamental energy in our body. One is called kidney yang. That generates our metabolism, energy, and vitality. The other one is kidney yin. That that allows us to um, have a moisture, lubrication. Uh, it calms us down. It helps us sleep. So the natural aging process in Chinese medicine says yang overtakes yin. What that means, Mm -hmm. what that translates into is we generate more of a pattern of inflammation that is drying up our essences. Think of a um, uh, a radiator in your car and it runs out of water and what do you get? Right. Dried up, heat, yeah, steam, dried okay, up. Heat, yeah, that's true. Behind hot flushes and night sweats, that pattern ah. of imbalance. So we generate towards inflammation as these essences dry up, and yang overtakes yin. Inflammation mm-hmm. overtakes lubrication, moisturizing, calming. So that is that is drying up of your mucous membranes. So your Mm -hmm. vaginal vaginal atrophy, your skin dries up, you have more insomnia, you may have more memory issues, you're not lubrication, fluids aren't available to nourish your brain. Um, You get the hot flashes, the night sweats, all these imbalances start up and you are really Mm -hmm. on your way to aging. So right. in Chinese medicine, they excel at creating formulas to regenerate these hormonal essences to bring balance back. So you okay. nourish your yin. You know, so mm-hmm. it's a combination of diet. You've got to stay away the, from the pro-inflammatory foods, which are generating inflammation. When people talk about I'm aging, my you know my my joints are aching, I have arthritis. Mm-hmm. That's you know that's not a natural part of aging as much as it is a pattern of inflammation due to stress, yeah. toxicity, and bad diet. We can reverse all those things. I personally love using traditional Chinese medicine. I work with a mm-hmm. master Chinese herbalist for 20 years, probably more actually, who customizes formulas with my patients based on their symptoms and tongue diagnosis because he's not near me he's i'm i'm here in oklahoma he's there in california and we customize chinese tinctures organic chinese herbal tinctures to fit a woman's pattern which is clearly visible in their tongue their tongue is a diagnostic tool in chinese medicine and it's been remarkable. We can reverse symptoms of hot flashes, night sweats. We we nourish the yin and we bring down the inflammation. We support digestion. Right. We help with um, um, a liver in one formula. It just in makes so formula. much sense to me. You know, right? it, knowing what I know now and what I've been through in the past year, which is discovering, realizing I had this thyroid imbalance I had insulin resistance I was gaining weight all these things happened and you know I actually fixed it all with nutrition well I am taking a thyroid a very light thyroid medication but I just recently took blood tests and I I want to get off of that if I you know I'm gonna hoping to just not take that because I don't want to take a pill for the rest of my you know what I mean I'm not a pill person (laughs) well you need to find out the root cause of your thyroid imbalance. So the root, the root cause, cause of thyroid could be deficiencies like iodine. It could be yeah. a variety of um, you know mineral deficiencies. It could be toxicity 
you know, maybe it's mercury or, or fluoride in the water in your toothpaste that's suppressing and replacing your um, iodine. It could be Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is not tested for a normal blood test, which is 80% of all thyroid right. issues are autoimmune, uh, which I had yeah. and have addressed you naturally. Did. Oh, my god! And gosh, I never went really? on thyroid meds. Yes. Oh, it could be. Well, it could that's be a whole adrenal, other conversation. Well, yeah, so it could know. be adrenal. So sh- it could be adrenal exhaustion because, or a, yeah. or, or, or overstimulation of your adrenals because when you make high cortisol level, it increases the production of um, of mm. of molecules that uh, it's called reverse T3. You block the 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 release of thyroid hormones <laughs> when you are in stress. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I you had my my, th- my cortisol levels last year when I took these tests. Out, it was you know about nine months ago. They were like three times what they should be normally. You know, they were way off the charts. So all right. of this it, is so making it could sense be, to me. It could be the cell phones. Cell phones impair thyroid yeah. function. The, the uh, microwave radiation actually goes in and compromises thyroid function. Do you ever come to LA and do and see people or? What type of a doctor should people look for if they want to go check these things? Okay, so uh, first of all, I uh, I have a virtual practice, so I consult with women all over the world because oh, wonderful! You can do that now, you know, with uh, Skype and Zoom, and you, know, you can see each other and you can organize tests. So, so um, that's how I work in my practice. I haven't been to LA in a long time, but I'll let you know when I come because I have some great <laughs> diagnostic and therapeutic tools that we can really get to the root cause with women when when I work with them one to one. But um, I definitely recommend seeing a good Chinese acupuncturist who also can do herbs. You don't you need the herbal part of it as well as the acupuncture part because the herbs actually regenerate these essences. The Chinese, um, the, the acupuncture helps to distribute energy and work with energy, but you need mm-hmm. the herbs because they actually can regenerate your hormonal essences at any age. So, wow. the chi- so, so, you know, when I work with women virtually, they just send me their tongue photo. I have their health history. I know what symptoms are going oh my on. Goodness. And, you know, when, with the master herbalist I work with, it's all very clear before us. We know exactly what's well, going I'm on gonna and where the that. problem is in the body. Yeah. So, I'm you know, and I, but, do that. but, 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 you know, um, you can take these herbs for a short period of time, at least three months. But really, Sheila, we have to understand once we get into our 50s, we have to be on a long term rejuvenation program because okay. the body's natural tendency is to impair digestion. When we get more adrenally exhausted, our immune system gets a little more vulnerable without support. With support, we can keep mm-hmm. all these systems humming along optimally for the rest of our lives, and we can die healthy. Wow. Yeah. And there, and let me just share a few other uh, things that I have been incorporating and, and, and using in my practice. I have recently written a new book that's just been released called The Hemp Health Revolution. And in okay. the Hemp Health Revolution, we talk about the benefit of hemp extract or CBDs, the non-psychoactive uh, CBD. Mm-hmm. So any, you know, anyone anywhere in the in, in the country can do CBDs, and uh, you know, uh, not fortunate enough to live in California, where you can go and get it anywhere, anytime. Right. But CBDs, but but again, there are high quality products that I mean I, yes. I have a product I work with that is uh, liposomal it's uh, pure it's organic I mean it's like the best of the best for for efficacy why do I say that because CBDs or the hemp extract has been known to regulate the system in our body called the endocannabinoid system so this is a new system in our body that's just discovered in the 1990s that controls homeostasis for our entire body when we're under mm-hmm. stress and we're malnourished our endocannabinoid system is deficient now it is the controller it keeps every system in our body humming along optimally when your endocannabinoid system is not able to function at 100% you are more prone to inflammation, to uh, neurological imbalance, to endocrine imbalance. I mean, every system is dependent on this 
endocannabinoid system, which is fueled by things like hemp extract. So hemp extract Mm -hmm. is actually another way that women can bring homeostasis back to their endocrine system. And I wrote a whole article on women's health and hemp extract and how these conditions of inflammation, which drives most PMS symptoms and endometriosis and ovarian cysts, all these things can actually be uh, regulated or helped be regulated with a good um, uh, hemp extract product as well as part of a protocol. I mean, there's no silver bullet here, you know. It's a protocol. Right. You have to put all the pieces together for optimal health and optimal rejuvenation and regeneration and hormonal balance at any age. That makes so much sense. And we'll put that article in the show note for everybody to look, you know, to read. Um, well, Cheryl, I I cannot tell you enough how much this how interesting this is and eye opening all this information is. So I recommend everybody get your book, Hormone Heresy, um, as well as any of the other books that you've written on different topics that, you know, have along the way become popular. And your website is whatwomenmustknow.com. Um, it, can people get in touch with you there and possibly schedule yes. a, a virtual oh, absolutely. appointment? Okay. Yep, yep, yep. People awesome. on my website, if you go to my store, if you want to, purchase a consultation that's available there so you know uh, absolutely and uh, yeah we'll share my articles and my radio show which is a weekly show that I have as well brings in a lot of the top people that talks about this we you know it's really about Mm -hmm. educating women empowering women and getting them to to own their bodies to love their bodies and to understand how our innate intelligence allows us to stay healthy and well and hormonally balanced for our entire lives. But we need to wake up to what really is yeah. going on and, you know, and take care of ourselves. It is, this has been, as I said, this is a wake-up call for me, and it's making sense for all the things that I have recently been through. Um, and hopefully we can help others to not have to go through the things that we went through to discover these things. So I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us again today, and we will have you back to talk about other specific things. So thank you again, Dr. Cheryl. Well, thank you. I I just so appreciate our time together and being able to have this great conversation, Sheila. You're doing such great work, and thanks for having me part of your show and your community. Well, that's it for this episode. And wow, again, such great information from Dr. Cheryl Selman about hormones. So don't forget, if you want a copy of Dr. Cheryl's book, Hormone Heresy, I have 16 copies. Send me a voice memo or an email to soundmindbodypodcast at gmail.com and let me know what's the most woo-woo thing you've ever done. So for the first 16 people who respond to that you will receive a copy of Dr. Selman's book, Hormone Heresy. Thanks for listening. And please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you like the podcast, give us a review on iTunes. It really helps new listeners find us. Thank you to our producer, Tim Edwards and the Inbound Podcasting Network. And thank you so much again to our guest, Dr. Cheryl Selman. Get in touch. I'm on Instagram at Sound Mind Body Podcast or find us on the web or Facebook. Search for Sound Mind Body Podcast. I'm Sheila Melody. Join us next week as we explore, enlighten, and evolve.